Welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. Today, we're gonna to get a little personal. Personal in terms of myself. I'm gonna talk about where my confidence stems from. It's not pretty, and I hope other children do not have to go through this. But bullying is real. We're gonna discuss it. I remember attending Holy Spirit School in Sacramento, California. I love that school. I'm Catholic, and I attended Catholic school from kindergarten to 12th grade. I essentially remember every single day. If it was my choice, I'd go back and do it again. I would do it in a heartbeat if given the choice. But I'm gonna tell you something. It wasn't easy. I got made fun of a lot. I distinctly remember kids behind me making faces during recess. I remember kids calling me names. I absorbed it all. I mean, what choice did I have? Hey, look at your suit. You've been taking bullets, charging it up with kinetic energy. I would bounce the basketball and I would shoot. I would play tetherball. Who remembers that game? The game where you would take the ball with, on a rope and just hit it around this pole. But every day, I would go home a little upset. I never, ever told my mom. Not one time. I never thought that was what I should do. I always thought that would make things worse. And there were times when I was really sad. I remember one day my mom got in a big car accident and one of the kids was like, poor Jamie, mommy got in a car accident. While he was laughing, I was eight years old. I remember that kid's first and last name. I remember everyone's first and last name and sometimes I think that's a sickness, remembering all these things. But here's the thing, because I'm not out here to name names. We all grew up and all of these kids grew up with me and when I see them now, they act like we're best friends. I go along with it, but I never forgot. I don't like bullies. To get through that as a child, you have to compensate. You either shrink, which is fine because the behavior is wrong, or you develop an immense confidence in yourself because you have to. Overcoming believing what those kids said to me took arrogance. To be able to face that on the daily, what choice did I have? People are always asking me where my confidence come from. Well, it comes from that. It comes from being made fun of. I had to create a layer of belief in myself to get through most of those elementary school days. I also developed confidence playing soccer and playing basketball. One of the sports I wish I would have continued to play was soccer because I was pretty good at it. But I remember one small story. I was about nine years old when my soccer coach suggested I change positions from right forward to left forward. Before I switched to left forward, I scored all the time. But one day, Jeff Roden, yes, I remember his name. I wonder what he's doing now. He joined the team. His natural position was right forward. So my coach put him there, and I had to play left forward. It sucked. I hated it. I failed over and over and over and over again. Couldn't use my left foot when I started. I felt like my coach didn't think I was good enough. I wanted to show him. I learned how to use my left foot. And the Oscar goes to Daniel Day-Lewis in my left foot. I learned how to score, but I resented it. Years later, I'm in high school, I'm right-handed. I noticed something and so did he. Pause. I'm filming, I'm filming, what's up? My staff, what's up? I'm filming. Hold on. What, I got to do a telly right now? What's it, COVID? COVID? Yeah. From Instagram or just random? It's from Instagram. Okay, are they, do they want the antibody? Okay, let me know. Bye. And I wanted to show him. So I learned how to use my left foot. And then I started scoring again. But I resented him. Years later, I noticed something, and so did he. His son was my point guard on our Hoop High School team. I was comfortable with the left half of my body, which was an advantage in my favorite sport. I could get to the basket left or right. I could use my left hand to lay it up or right hand. One night, there was a game where I had 28 points. He stopped me, my old soccer coach, and said every bucket you made was from the left side of the floor. He said, you know why? Jeff Roden. It was then that I realized if decisions are made to avoid mistakes, you avoid learning. 
Failure is the best teacher. I thought it was a mistake to put me at left forward. It wasn't. It was an opportunity. An opportunity I realized along the way. An opportunity that gave me the confidence to deal with the Holy Spirit kids. One out of every three students in the United States today reports being bullied. I am sure right now my kid is being bullied by someone in school. I just hope she develops the confidence, hell, even cockiness to absorb it and keep it moving. She needs to talk to me. I need to talk to her. We have to have this discussion surrounding bullying because it's not okay. We have to have an open conversation and I'm gonna have to start asking her, how do you feel about going to school? And I'm gonna have to give her strategy to be able to deal with bullies because just like in life, at school, they're bullies. But you have to have this discussion with your children because children can be really sensitive and they're very fragile minds. So how do you teach a fragile mind? You don't make them afraid of having the conversation. Talk about it over dinner. Talk about strategies to walk away. Sometimes you gotta let a grown up know. That's the world we live in now. There's no longer the right to just kind of ignore it because you never know what's gonna happen these days. So have that conversation with your kid. And I want you to try to understand, just like Ted Lasso says, be curious, not judgmental. Thanks for joining this episode of Medicine Deconstructed where we're here to arm you with information. Please come back next week for some more ammunition. Thanks a lot. Thank you.